Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting leaves are changing and I'm sipping on some apple spice tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks such as this one. So this painting that I did today is inspired by a photo that was submitted by one of my Patreon members by the name of Karen Reed. I have a benefit for my Patreon members whereby every now and again I'll put out a call for photos, they'll submit them, and I'll pick some of them to turn into YouTube tutorials, and I'll send the original painting off to the person who submitted the photo. So if you're interested in learning how you too could submit your photos for me to turn into tutorials and or learn more about the Patreon membership program where there's a ton of other painting benefits to enjoy, I have all of that information down below in the video description. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so what we're gonna be using for materials today is a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, fire red, chrome yellow, Mars black, burnt sienna, which I like to call rust, chrome orange, and green oxide. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil that I'm gonna be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a one inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 10 round synthetic brush. And then I have a number three round synthetic brush. And I most likely will call these small, medium, and large, but or I'll call them out by their name, but my tendency is probably just gonna be small, medium, and large on that. And of course, you can switch those up if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna to wanna to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well. Sorry about that. As well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase from my shop things individually like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna paint a base coat onto the canvas. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush, and I'm gonna be using chrome yellow. So take out your sunglasses, it's gonna be bright. <laughs> so I know that I want a lot of bright tones in my leaves, so I know that this yellow that I'm gonna wanna have in a lot of my leaves will be very difficult, not super difficult, but a little challenging to get the vibrancy in the in the yellow leaves if I try and build this color on top of a dark base or a darker base. So the dominant color that I'm finding in my reference that I'm using is yellow. So I'm opting to do my entire canvas with yellow first so I can use this to my benefit as I'm building up my colors. And I'm gonna have a dark background behind my leaves, so I'll be able to paint right on top of this yellow for any areas that I wanna have on the darker side, and this will disappear with a darker color on top of it. So that's why I'm choosing to do this, because it's gonna ease my painting process and expedite the building of my vibrant colors. And then once I've got the entire canvas covered, I'm just gonna take my brush and go back and forth left to right. This will help me catch any spots that I may have missed. It'll also help me to uh, level out any really thick spots or um, just kind of even out that, that coverage. 
and it doesn't have to be perfect because we're again going to be doing lots of stuff on top of it but once you've got this done we are going to be using our drawing utensil for the next step so you can put this large brush away take out your drawing utensil and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna draw an outline for our leaves. I'm gonna be using my pencil. You could, of course, use any drawing utensil that's comfortable to you. I do recommend before you start this step that you make sure that your canvas is dry because it's always easier to draw on a dry canvas than it is to draw on a wet canvas. <laughs> so I'm gonna be guiding you through a series of leaves. You can make as many or as few as you want. You do not need to put them in the same position as I'm putting them in. I am going off of or being inspired by a photo reference. So I'm gonna put mine in a similar position as the photo reference. But as you go through the process, if you wanna reshape your um, leaves into different kind of leaves or different you know, placement, feel free to do so. How I'm gonna be doing this so I don't get confused because <laughs> there's a lot of leaves is I and I use this same approach when I'm doing like a bouquet of flowers when I won't go to do that initial uh, sketch because I don't do very detailed drawings before I start my painting process I just like to have basic elements in where in in the placement that I want them and in and in some basic shapes for blocking in my paint so when I'm doing these type of drawings where there's lots of similar objects in order for me to not get confused, I start with the ones that are closest to the viewer first. So the ones that you're going to see almost the whole object. So if you're doing a flower bouquet, whatever flower is closest to the viewer and you see almost the whole flower. So in this case, I'm going to do the leaves that are on top or closest to the viewer first, and then I'll build the leaves that are underneath alongside of those. So that way, we're not working around certain stuff. We're not trying to overlap in very confusing ways. We're just going to start with the outside ones and work our way in. When I paint, it'll be the opposite, but when I draw, it this makes it easier for me. So I'm going to find myself the center of my canvas, top to bottom, left to right. So for me, I've already kind of marked the center of my canvas right here. I like to do that in order to give you guys a, a good gauge as to where I'm putting my markers because I'm going to guide you through a series of markers. We'll connect those and this kind of always allows us almost to visually cut the canvas in quarters and keep us kind of contained and not go too askew or far away. So I'm going to start with a, a leaf that I feel is on top but it's over on uh, on the right hand side. So I'm going to come all the way over to the right and then I'm going to go up just a little bit maybe about a half of an inch give myself a marker and then I'm going to come down until I'm about maybe two, two and a half inches away from the bottom of my canvas. Give myself another marker. And we're just going to be seeing the edge of this, but it is on top of all of my other leaves. So I want to do this first. I'm going to come almost about halfway between these two. So if this is about the halfway mark, I'm maybe a little above that. And then almost halfway between the edge of my canvas and the center of my canvas. So somewhere in through here, just giving myself a couple of little points that I can uh, make come out of this leaf. And then from here, I'm gonna go to the left maybe about inch, inch and a half, and then down maybe about an inch, inch and a half. So I have four markers for this leaf right now. Now I'm just gonna connect it in a really fun way. I'm gonna take this and bring it down in through here. I, this one's gonna kind of go back and give a little um, scoop into the side of the leaf gonna bring a little tiny point in through there and make these as organic as you want. They don't have to be exactly as mine. I'm just, again, kind of using a photo reference as my stimulant or inspiration. So that's gonna be the first one. The next one is gonna be a really large leaf that is kind of tucked under this one a little bit. So I'm gonna find myself back at the center of my canvas and I'm gonna to come to the left and down maybe about um, I don't know, half of an inch and a half of an inch. That's gonna be the one of the little points. I'm gonna make another little point down from here about maybe an inch and in maybe about a half of an inch because it's gonna tuck behind this one. And then I'm gonna come up a couple of inches from here, maybe somewhere in through here. I don't want this leaf to go too, too 
high and take up too much room. I've got one, two, three markers for it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come about halfway between here and here, so somewhere around here, and I'm going to go up from this marker. I would say oh, almost halfway between here and the top, but maybe a little bit shy, so somewhere in through here. This just kind of gives me a containment barrier <laughs> for these for this particular leaf. Then I'm just going to start connecting my markers in a way that is similar to um, the leaves that I'm seeing in the photograph. So this just came, comes down a little bit, this comes over, and I've got a little pointy thing happening in through here, I've got a little pointy thing happening in through here, and then it just kind of scoops around here. This comes out, down, over, kind of uh, ripples down this side, in through here, and again, I'm, I'm Doing mine similar to what I'm seeing in a photo, you can make yours whatever way you want. I'm gonna, this is gonna cross over my little center mark. It's gonna come back in through here, like this, and it's actually gonna be tucked behind here. So I'm gonna take it like that, stick it behind there, and then I can even do a little kind of uh, pointy piece come in like this. So as I go through this process, there's gonna be certain areas that I'm gonna give um, uh, I want some of it to be my background as well. So as we get to sections that are going to be representational of my background, I'm actually going to mark them as such. So as I go through this process, like we're going to do our third leaf now, but once we put that third leaf in, I'm actually going to section off a couple of um, points that we're going to designate as our background. So my third one is going to take up this big area in through here. So again, I'm going to give you a couple points of reference. I'm going to start in through here. So this is just up just a little bit from here. That's going to be my first marker. My second marker is going to come way down in this left-hand corner. So I would say it's a little bit higher than this one, and it's maybe about three or four inches, well, maybe about four inches away from, over from the left of my canvas, so somewhere in through here. And then I'm going to come down right about the center of my canvas, maybe about a half of an inch away from the edge, something like that. And then I'm gonna do another pointer or a little point to my leaf way down in, in this vicinity, down in through here. So I'm gonna start connecting these. And as I do this, I'm going to um, start marking off where I want to say is my background. So from this marker right in through here, I'm going to just come up from this point right here, give myself a little kind of swervy line, and then I'm going to put an X. X is going to mark our background. So that's our first marker for that one. I'm going to take from here, I'm going to connect this one to down and through here with this long wavy line. I'm going to connect this one to this one that's going to kind of scoop in um, to right about in through here. I'm going to give a long wavy line, and then in through here another long kind of wavy type of line like that. Then over in through here, I'm going to come to, so this marker here, just go to the left and maybe down just a little bit. This is going to connect to this area way down over here. And then this is going to connect super kind of little wavy line in through here and then connect down to here. I'm going to take from here I'm going to scoop it kind of past this marker right here. Well, I'm going to hit that marker. So I'm going to take from here, hit my marker, and then like that. So this little sliver here becomes my background, <laughs> that little sliver there. I'm also going to put a little section in through here, just arbitrarily kind of make a, a diagonal line like this, more background. And then uh, this is also going to be background, but it's all a connected section. So I'm going to wait until I put my... Um, the leaf that closes off this section before I mark that. This is going to be part of this leaf in through here. So the next leaf that I'm going to do is actually up top because there's leaves that are underneath here, but I still have another leaf that's kind of on top. So I'm going to put it up in through here. So I'm going to find myself about the center of my canvas up top and go to the left of that about, that about an inch and a half to two inches, make myself a marker. And then I'm going to come maybe one, two, about two and a half inches over from the top right. Give myself a marker. And then I'm going to come uh, straight down from here until I'm a little bit past the top of this one. And I'm going to go, uh, no, that's not right. I'm going to come 
straight down from here. Actually, I'm above here, maybe about an inch and a half, something like that, right about in through here. So now I'm going to connect. Well, and let's give it one more marker. So from here, maybe about another inch up, something like that. So I'll connect all of these. I'm going to kind of scoop this in, give myself a nice wavy line like that. This one is going to come kind of wavy over in through here like this, up like this. And of course, again, you don't need to make yours exactly as mine. I'm really just following what I'm seeing in a photo reference, but you can make yours whatever way that you want. So that's going to be a leaf up and through there. There's also another little pop of a leaf over on this right hand side. So I'm going to come down about an inch and a half and then I'm going to come maybe about halfway between here and here. Give myself a marker. I'm going to connect this one right to this leaf right in through here and same thing right here. So that's going to be a little tip of a leaf. I'm also going to have um, like a little section over here that's going to be my background. So I'm just going to take this and give myself a little line and I'm going to X out this one right in through here. So that's going to be my background. I'm going to X out a couple of little sections up here too. So I have a little bit more background. So X and then a little section up here, X. <laughs> I feel like I'm almost like creating a color by number right now, <laughs> paint by number, but it'll all be fun and exciting when we go to paint it in. So now I'm going to do the leaf that sits behind these two and this one too, um, right back here. So I'm going to come over here, maybe about an inch and a half like that. And then I'm going to come down right in through here and give myself just a little kind of scoop point right in through here. And I'm going to connect here to here with a couple of little points of a, <laughs> of a fun leaf. So we're going to take, actually, I think I want this one maybe over just a little bit farther to the right. I'm going to bring this one over. I feel like it's over just a little bit further like this. There we go. And bring this like this and then up and then a swirly down here with a little point and then a swirl down here to meet that one. So this is all one section in through here. <laughs> this is going to be a fun one. I can tell. I can tell already. Um, so now I'm going to go uh, right over up in this top left hand corner. I'm going to come about halfway between here and here. Give myself a, oh, maybe just maybe about over two inches. Give myself a little bit of a marker. I'm going to come this is actually going to be where I had that other marker, something like that. And this one's got a couple points. I'm going to position them right about here. And I would say somewhere about here is where I'm going to put these two points. So again, I'm going to just kind of have fun with this, bring this down, give myself a little ripply point, bring this back up, little additional point in through here. That might be the, that might be the background of another one. It's, there's lots of leaves, so I'm going to just, I guess that could be a point. We'll just make that a point. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. It could be if you want it to be. Um, again, it's tough when you're following a photo that's got so many little um, little details to it. So you just got to know when to when to hold back, um, when, to, when to care. I think this point comes out a little bit farther, but you know, they're leaves. They can be all different kinds of shapes. So now that I got that one, I have another huge one right in through here. So I'm trying to build my way towards the back. I started with these front ones and I'm going back and I'm doing the biggest ones that I, that I can see. So I'm going to come from here. I'm going to go over to the left, uh, maybe just up a little bit from here. Give myself a marker. I'm going to connect this to midway down this line in through here, just again with a kind of a roly poly type of a line. This one, this leaf is going to sneak back behind here and connect over here. So I'm just going to give myself this little kind of um, dip in through there. This, uh, and then there's another little section here. I'm just going to mark it while, I, while I'm here. This section right here is my background. So I'm putting an X. Um, I'm going to do another little leaf up here. I didn't finish this big one. I got distracted. But while I'm up in this left-hand corner, let me finish this left-hand corner. I'm going to do just a little line in through here with an X. That's my background. And then I'm going to do another little fun line like this. This is my background. And then this is a, a little edge to a leaf, this part up and through here. That should do. And then this um, this little section in through here, let's just put a little line there. And then this is another section for a background. 
let me finish this leaf now. <laughs> so this one's almost done. I just need to do a big scoopy thing in through here. So I'm gonna come right about here, give myself a marker. I'm gonna come down from here about two inches. I'm actually gonna just give a little kind of loop like this in through here, give myself an X, my background, and then this is gonna connect to here with a point of the leaf right over here. So I'm gonna take from here, scoop, little ripple with a point, little ripple with a, I guess I'm gonna have a point there also, a little scoop like this, another little kind of point like this, and meet in through here. So I just created this big, huge leaf in through here. There's a couple of little spots back here that look like they're um, just uh, little slivers of leaves. So I'm just gonna put a couple of little markers in through here, maybe a little kind of point in through there. That looks pretty good. And then this whole big section right in through here gets a big old X. That's gonna be my background. And I think I got it all. <laughs> I've got every section that I wanted. I've got big leaves and I've got all of my background sections marked with an X. And if I missed any, I'll, I'll let you know, but I think I got them all. So we're gonna be using our medium round, so the number 10 round for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can make any little fiddling adjustments that you want. You can put your uh, drawing utensil away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to be doing the first layer of our background, which we've marked with our X's, as well as our leaves. I'm gonna be using my number 10 round. The colors I'm gonna use are black, burnt sienna, red, orange, yellow, and if I use, if I, I might use a little white, I'm not sure, but if I do, I'll let you know. So I'm just gonna be painting my background black to start. We'll add some little leaves and grass and stuff uh, it, the impression of that in a future step, but right now I just want to paint it black. And then my leaves, I'm going to be starting the process of the autumn color in them. So that's where I'll be using my burnt sienna and my reds and my oranges and my yellows. The photo reference I'm using shows the leaves are kind of darker at the bottom with more reds at the bottom. And then as they go up, they get a little bit more yellow, but there's a big, huge shadow up on the top one. So We'll be incorporating that probably in a future step, but right now we're just gonna get that base coat on. So I'm gonna start with my big base coat for my background. I'm using just black for this, and I realize I have this big, huge section in through here, which I'm okay with using this smaller brush because I really just want to um, kind of allow for a loose kind of background. I don't need anything super, um, uh, tight, which means I don't need this paint to cover 100% on this background because I am going to be doing, um, I'm going to be doing some grass and different kinds of effects on that background or on the, um, the grassy area that's underneath these leaves. You could also have these leaves, say, in a tree. So if you, if you wanted to do, say, a sky background or something more um, along that line, you could certainly start or uh, work with a darker background or, or a bluish background for that. But for, for, for my purposes, again, I'm utilizing a photo reference to um, guide me through this painting. So the, um, the leaves in this painting are sitting on a pretty dark, almost like a forest floor. I keep adding a touch of water to my brush in order to allow me to kind of get this paint to spread a little bit better. Um, I do uh, use a student grade paint, which tends to be on the thinner side. Um, but when I'm doing these type of uh, steps, when I want to get this nice and close around these edges, I like to use that moisture in my brush to allow for the paint to kind of sink into those the holes of the canvas a little bit better. I also um, am using a little bit of water on my brush in order to give me different kind of tones in this background color. You could go straight black, but 
Um, I'm opting to use a little bit of moisture in there for dual purposes, not only just to kind of get um, into these little uh, side crevices, but also to give me the uh, maybe a couple of little different tones within that grassy area as well. Another option that you could have done was you could have painted the entire canvas your dark background first, but I knew that I wanted that yellow to be very vibrant and I didn't want to have to struggle with um, my with the dark background showing through the yellow paint. So that's why I opted to kind of approach this in um, a different process, which I like to paint from the back of my paintings forward, um, which would mean theoretically I would have painted that whole background first, but these leaves took up so much area within the, um, within the painting. I didn't want to, again, I didn't want to struggle with trying to cover that dark background to get the vibrancy in those leaves. So again, you just as you as you are learning your your own painting process and how you, the the paint that you like, how it works and reacts on different things and um, kind of allows you to create these different effects, you'll you'll find your process. You know, watching other people execute their processes can always kind of give you a leg up on as far as knowledge goes and how things work for for certain people based on you know the tools that they're using and the tools are not just the brushes it's the different type of paint you, you know people paint all over the world and they have different supply you know chains available to them and what i'm using in my little corner of the world might not be accessible to other people um, just based on, on where they live. So you can always create similar effects using different tools, but the process might be a little bit different for you based on the different tools that you're using. So just learning those, you know, those ways will, um, that work best for you will, will help you develop those paintings into the way that is visually appealing to you. And it always makes it more, more personal. I just got tons of black paint on my pinky. Didn't want to, didn't want to get all over my painting. Um, will will create by you using your own unique tools that will make your painting more more of a um, original piece of art that is distinctly yours and less of a replication of somebody else's. So those kind of things can certainly help out. So I have, I nailed all my, my background areas. So now I'm going to just kind of thin out any real thick spots that I see so they can, they can dry a little quicker. So now what I'm gonna do is I am going to uh, wash and dry my brush and I'm going to paint my first layer on my leaves. So as I do this, I am not going for anything really detailed all I'm looking to do is just kind of add my first layer to them. So this is where I can kind of start with my back leaves and work my way forward. Or because I'm doing my first layer and I know that uh, these colors are going to kind of meld into each other and I can work on my edges later, I could certainly work on my top leaves and work my way down. It almost doesn't matter too much on this step. But what I am going to do is I'm going to find myself kind of um, a couple of the, the darker areas that I feel are going to be inside. I'm going to put a little bit of burnt sienna on those. So I'm just picking up a little bit of burnt sienna and I'm going to hit a couple of these, um, these leaves that I feel might be underneath and maybe a little shadowed. I'm going to put some of those. I feel like this might have been a good spot for some of the background, but we're just going to put a shadowed leaf in through there. These leaves up in through here, I feel like these are going to be pretty, pretty shadowed. And you might run into some of your um, wet black paint if you're going kind of speedily along like I am, like I'm going to run into wet black right in through here. Just work it into that leaf. Don't worry about it being, being perfect at this point. I'm going to have some bright highlights on, on this leaf in through here, but 
and this leaf, but a lot of it, a lot of these top leaves have um, kind of a deeper base to them. So I'm actually just going to use a, a lot of my burnt sienna up on these top ones in through here. And again, um, not doing anything super fancy right now, just kind of giving myself a good head start. My paint is transparent or translucent, which means I'm going to be able to see my pencil marks underneath here. I just picked up some yellow paint um, just to kind of get this to blend out a little bit into those edges. So I, I speak of my transparent yellow paint because I'm able to kind of utilize the edges um, of it, of where I've already marked those leaves, I'm able to um, kind of just carefree paint over them and I'm still gonna be able to see that, um, that outline underneath it. So this looks pretty good in through here. I'm looking to see if there's any other areas that I kind of want to use that burnt sienna, maybe a little bit up in through here. And the only trick here is, again, depending on what tool you decided to use for your, um, for your um, outline, you might have chose to use chalk. And if you did use chalk, then your outlines might be kind of disappearing on you. So if you did you opt to use like a chalk or something that disappears really easily while you're painting, then you might um, find that you want to keep the evidence of your, of your leaf's the edges a little bit more visible. So I'm thinking that that's pretty good, maybe a little bit more burnt sienna up on this guy up and through here. And then what, I don't know what this mark is in through here. It's all right. We're going to just, we're going to just paint over it for now. Um, uh, so I'm putting just a little bit more burnt sienna up and through here. I do want to have some oranges and yellows in these guys also. So now I'm just going to pick up some yellow on my dirty brush and just kind of add a little bit of yellow in some of these. The, these leaves are kind of transitional with their colors. Autumn leaves I find have lots of gradients in them. So as I'm building my autumn leaves, <laughs> I'm leaving lots of little um, kind of soft gradients, if you will, from one color to the other. I'm not doing any firm lines. I'm picking up more yellow right now. Um, and this is just gonna kind of give me a little little softer transition. Maybe some of this is coming down in through here. This is orange plus yellow on my brush right now. Just again, giving myself a little, little um, orange type of tone throughout some of these. I'm gonna keep picking up yellow right now to let that orange kind of work itself off of my brush. So that's another great way to, to um, create a a transition is just by allowing your your dirty brush to do the work for you. So I still have a little bit of my orange on my brush with that uh, yellow. I might even still have a little bit of that burnt sienna on my brush. So as I just keep on picking up yellow, the um, the other colors that are that are residing in the bristles of my brush just start to release themselves. So especially since I'm kind of scrubbing it a little bit harder, I like to use the side of my brush a lot um, it, as opposed to the tip of the brush, especially when I'm using these rounds, it helps me to create these fabulous gradients. Um, let's see, I need to kind of hit these guys up and through here. This one I kind of want to just do, um, yellow. I feel like this one I want super bright, so I'm not going to taint that too much with a with a different color. Same thing with this guy up and through here. I'm, so I'm just going to kind of hit this with another layer of yellow. I think actually maybe a little bit of white. I wasn't sure if I was going to use white or not, but I feel like this guy up and through here could be, it looks like it's got a lot of sunshine hit in it. So I'm just going with a little bit of yellow and white on my brush right now just to put a tiny bit more vibrancy. This is going to cast a shadow over and through there somewhere, but just kind of working these brightness, these bright areas. So this is again, just yellow on my brush right now. This guy up and through here, I feel it could be yellow and white. And again, I, I'm going off of what I'm seeing in in the uh, photo reference, you could certainly do yours elsewhere. I'm going to stick a little bit of burnt sienna in this little section here. So a little burnt sienna 
goes in through here. And if you find that as you're going through the process, um, your, your brush becomes overloaded. Because I just went from yellow and white on my brush to burnt sienna. I knew that I didn't have a lot of yellow and white on my brush at that time. But if you did and you went into this burnt sienna, you might have like a little muddy mess in through there. So if that happens, that just means your brush is overloaded. Just wash and dry your brush and move on to, to the next um, color. I'm gonna just pick up a little bit more yellow on my dirty brush, uh, maybe a little orange too. I feel like there's a little tiny bit in this guy in through here, and then just kind of moving it down in through here. I can still see my, my pencil, so I'm just rolling with it. I'm, I'm allowing that pencil to um, help me along with my, with my outline so I don't have to worry about um, that later on, and just a little bit more yellow going on my brush. I'm already digging it. <laughs> I think we're almost done. I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> um, just allowing this. This is yellow with a little bit of orange. I haven't touched the, the red yet. Um, that's going to be coming right in the next big, huge leaf that I'm going to hit. Uh, that's going to be this one, and this one are going to be dominant red. So I'm going to just pick up some red on my dirty brush. So right now I have red and what I was using, the yellow and white. So I can kind of do wherever I feel maybe those lighter areas are. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more yellow, which would be up in through here. So I'm feeling like there's a little bit more lightness up in through here. So that's where I'm headed with that. Um, there's a little bit of lightness over in through here with the yellow. So I'm just gonna kind of use the remnants on my brush right now. Could even pick up orange at this point too, but I'm just, uh, using ye uh, yellow plus whatever the red remnants are on my brush to get the lighter areas, which are over in through here. That's gonna be a big shadow underneath. That's gonna be a big shadow. And then it really kind of comes into a brilliant red over here. So I'm just gonna pick up red and <laughs> paint this whole section in with red. So again, I know that my paint is transparent, so as I'm coming around these corners and touching my background, I most likely am still gonna be seeing that background underneath it. But if you're working with a paint um, that has great opacity to it and you can't see through it at all, you might uh, wanna be a little bit more cautious around those edges um, where it meets that background because you might not want that overlap um, might might hinder your performance. I'm picking up a little bit more yellow. I know I've got a good amount of red on my brush, but I can see that this leaf kind of uh, has a little bit lighter edges. And I just ran through some wet black. Now I have too much black on my brush. So I'm gonna just wash it and dry it because I don't want it to, to taint it too much. Pick up a little bit more red and yellow. And red and yellow makes orange. And I, and I understand that. I could just be using orange um, but my red is going to give me a little bit deeper of a tone, um, more in the red family. <laughs> and as I'm, I, so I don't necessarily need to use it with the, with the yellow per se. Um, but I am, I'm detecting little bits of the yellow within these leaves. So I'm just gonna, I'm just working it the way that I see it. This other leaf that we're gonna be doing in a second, this one right here, I'm just going all in with red on this one. So this is just gonna be red on this one. And then I'm just gonna bring this out to the edge. And then once I've got this step done, I am going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once I've got this done and, I, and I'm confident that I've hit all the areas that I wanted to hit, and again, I'm not looking for perfection right now, just wanted to look for a good start to the leaves, um, a base coat for my background, because we're gonna be finishing that background before we finish our leaves, and um, just having these leaves with their base coat on them is gonna, is gonna, you know, just start our process and give us a good visual on the color variations and stuff. So that looks pretty good. And I think that's all I'm gonna do for that step. So again, I'm gonna use the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the background. So all these black areas. I'm gonna be using my number 
10 round to paint, but I am going to make one custom color, so I'm going to use my number three round to pre-mix a custom color. The colors I'm going to use in this step are black, brown, orange, green, and white, and if I use any other colors, I'll let you know, but I'm thinking that's all I'm going to be using. So the custom color I'm going to make is like an army green type of a color, and I'll be using that as some of the brush that's underneath these leaves. So I have pre-mixed my color on my palette here. How I achieved this is green, brown, and just a touch of white. So this is steering it into, I need much more brown than that. This is steering it into a very neutralized green color, very natural, neutral, as if maybe there's some little, um, you know, other small leaves and grass and stuff underneath the, the, um, these leaves. I'm going to be using this color in conjunction with maybe a little bit of orange, maybe a little bit more brown, maybe a little bit of green, maybe a little bit of black in order to get my different tonal values throughout this area. In these small little nooks, I might need to resort to my small brush, but I'm going to attempt to do it with just my number 10 round. And if I need a switch along the way, I certainly will. I'm going to tackle this big area first, just so I'm all nice and warmed up. And then when I go to do the little areas, um, I'll have much more information and idea of what I want to do. So I'm going to first just make sure that I don't have any really bright yellow spots left. So I'm going to just take a little bit of my black plus a touch of water and just, I don't mind having some light areas, but that vibrant yellow, I feel is not visible in the background on the photograph. So I just want to make sure if I do have any um, spots that I might have missed um, that are still super vibrant yellow, I just want to hit those um, and make sure that those are accounted for so they don't uh, take away from my focal point. So once I've got that done, now I can just start being really carefree about adding little little leaves. I can just kind of dot stuff in. I can put little pieces of grass. I'm just giving this kind of carefree um, display of little leaves and sticks and all kinds of um, little bits of information. I'm not pushing my brush hard to get the little sticks and stuff. And keep in mind that these are probably, it, I think they're almost like laying down. I could be wrong. The photo could be at, from a different angle, but to me, they they almost just kind of look like little sticks and stuff, kind of laying um, flat on the ground. Every now and again, maybe I'll pick up a little extra bit of green, and this is going to give me um, some additional green marks. It's going to turn darker on this back, this dark background. So as I'm going through this process, if I'm thinking that this is too bright or too light, I know that when it dries, it's going to be drying darker because of the um, the dark background that we have that we started with. So I'm kind of hitting areas where I feel that the um, where I feel I'm seeing brighter marks in the um, in the photo. I'm picking up a little bit more yellow or uh, green right now. I just said yellow too because I just saw a little bit of um, darker yellow that I might want to incorporate. Um, that looks pretty good in through there. I feel like I got a couple more in through here. I'm going to actually start picking up a little bit of orange on my dirty brush because I feel uh, in through here there's some kind of dark orangey type of, of tones. And I'm really just kind of dabbing my brush. I am not going in for every single little mark that I see in the photograph. I, I, I don't have the, um, the desire when I'm painting to go that deep into um, photorealism. But if you feel that that's somewhere where you wanna go, you can certainly do every little stick and twig if you do an area and you say, oh, that was too bright, or you want something to go a little darker, just pick up a little bit of black with your brush. If you want you know, this to look like it's got more texture, just add a couple of little black dots in it. If you made a line that was too thick, just kind of thin it out with a little bit of black because your black is your background. So 
Um, I can pick up a little bit of orange with my black and just give myself this little area in through here. And again, I don't need to go full on every little mark that I've seen in that photo. I can do different tones if I want to do maybe a little bit of brown. I am going to pick up a little bit of yellow. I didn't say I was going to use yellow, but brown and yellow on my brush just to give myself another little or maybe a little orange and white too. <laughs> you can do whatever kind of tones that you want. I think the key here is just to not make it too colorful. This is something that's really subtle in the background, kind of subdued. There's a couple of little pops like over and through here that look like they might be catching a little bit more light. Maybe a stick or two is a little bit lighter. So again, I am using a little bit of yellow, orange, brown, my uh, army green so just giving myself just these little kind of um, pockets of little leaves and stuff there's a couple up in through here this is looking pretty good I think I want a couple of little lighter ones in through here so again I'm just dabbing with my brush I don't I'm not saying oh I need an exact leaf in through here um, and you can do again in any color variety that you want just keeping it subdued um, will make it look a little bit more representational of this particular photo. You, you know, again, you might feel that you want to do a different um, representation um, of whatever, you know, you want. There's a big dark area in through here, so I might actually hit that with some more black. So if you're finding that there's an area that is really dark and you have a light, you know, tone to it, just pick up a little bit more black. I feel like I want this to be even darker in through here, even more subdued. So I can certainly hit that with that, maybe a little bit more of my army green, get a couple of little leaves in through there. And again, just kind of filling it in the best that I can without um, going to um, over the top with my detail because I don't, I don't need to. Um, but that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to just kind of hit my little spots. I feel like I want another little kind of stick popping out here. That was, that was a little bright. So we're just going to, we're just going to dull that down. <laughs> and that's what you do. If you come to an area and you're like, whoops, didn't mean to do that. That was a little bit too much. Um, you can just dull it down. So again, yellow, green, orange, white, and I love to use multiple colors on my brush at the same time because I, I get these carefree color variations in it. Um, but again, I didn't want it too, too uh, colorful per se. Um, so that's why I am just kind of letting the colors almost just, and I hate to use the word muddy themselves, <laughs> but allowing them to really just kind of blend a little bit with each other without over blending so I don't have just one solid color back there but I've got a multitude of textures and um, earthy tones so I'm thinking that that's pretty good I'm gonna now just kind of and it's got similar tones to what I'm seeing in the um, photo so I'm gonna move on to the littler um, pockets within the leaves so I don't need to do much I'm just gonna kind of again kind of um, flip back and forth between my army green, my orange, my yellow, maybe a touch of white, but very little bit of paint on my brush. And just maybe kind of pop in a couple of little marks. This one's got a little mark in through there, a little kind of mark here. I do want to make sure if I am in one of these dark areas that if it needs to be dark, just make it dark. Um, this one almost looks like it's got a little orangey, or reddish hue around it so I'm just gonna put a little bit of my orange in there just to give that the representation of what I'm seeing in the photo this one's got so there might be a couple of little leaves that are on the you know ground underneath with these you know darker um, autumn tones on them so if you feel that you're seeing them in the um, in these little pockets then just feel free to put it in there so that was a little bit of my army green just kind of popping in these little marks again I don't need to do much just kind of giving myself another layer up in through these guys so it's not just black and then once I've got that done and it's uh, satisfying to my eye I feel like there's a couple of little 
markers, mark little spots in through here. Um, once I've got that done, I am going to be using my, what am I going to use for the next step? I think I'm going to use this same um, number 10 um, round for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this brush and get ready for the next step. Alright, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the second layer to our leaves. I'm going to be using my number 10 round brush and I'm going to use the same leaf colors. So I'm using burnt sienna red, orange, yellow, and white and I'm thinking that's it. So what I want to do in this step is really just give another layer to my color on the leaves so I can have my gradients where I want. I am going to be doing a future step where I put the veins in the um, leaves. So I'm not concerned about that right now, but I do want to have a little bit smoother gradients um, and maybe understand where my shadows are going to be placed a little bit better. We'll have a, a, a future step that will really um, define the shadows as well, but like these guys up and through here, they've got some big shadows on them, but I do have a real bright spot on this leaf here that I feel I need to kind of um, put back in or uh, kind of get it back to that yellow part so I can get that contrast. So th those are the things I'm going to be working on on this step. Again, I'm going to use my number um, 10 round, and I think I'm going to probably, um, uh, I think, I don't know what direction I'm going to go in. I, I think I'm going to try and do the, the leaves that are underneath first and work my way to the top. So I'm going to start with this leaf right in through here. I do have some deep shadows up in through here. So I'm going to use my burnt sienna to just kind of um, really get those identified. I don't need to um, go all the way with them yet, but what I'm looking to do is help my brain organize where the edges and stuff are for, for these shadows. Again, I don't need them super defined yet, but I, I, in the composition of the photograph, the shadows play a pretty big role. Um, as well as the contrast from the um, the shadow into the um, into the bright areas of the leaves. So that's kind of where I I want to allow myself to um, to make sure that I understand where those are because the again the light spots of the other leaves are or next to those shadows are pretty darn. Um, powerful in this photo so that's where I um, want to make sure I understand where these shadows are going so conversely the color of the leaf next to it when I need to like what happened on that top one when I need that light area to be super bright in order to um, to uh, have that high contrast that I enjoyed in this <laughs> photograph that I, I'm understanding that. So I'm seeing that there's some shadows over here. And again, I'm just using the burnt sienna as my shadow maker right now, I or my shadow kind of placer <laughs> right now, um, just to kind of keep it in that autumn -y tone. So this whole um, one in through here, I want to put another layer on this little uh, guy back here. He's the furthest one in the back <laughs> right here. Um, so now that I've got that in place, now I know where I where my dark areas need to be. And then the rest of the um, leaf, I can really just hone in on my gradient. So washing, drying my brush. I've got my, my yellow, and I'm actually going to pick up a little bit of white too because I've got some, um, some lighter area in through here. And this is where I, I just want to kind of finalize my, my gradient. Um, on these leaves. You don't need to do these leaves in this many layers that I'm doing, but again, I really wanted to um, capture the vibrancy of the um, of this photo and of the uh, the effect that these beautiful autumn leaves can have. So in order to to do that, I get a lot of dimension and um, 
details when I do this multi-layered kind of process. So that's where I'm headed. Um, I'm seeing some good lightness kind of on the corner of this leaf. I can also use these, um, these tones. So right now I'm using a little bit lighter tone than I did initially, the yellow and the white, in order to get little parts of the leaves to pop out. So I can put a little light area in through here and that's gonna make that leaf kind of look like it is rippled in a sense. And again, I'm not coming up with this idea. This is what the photo is telling me is happening. Um, same thing over here. We got a little bit of yellow and white over in through here. And it might just be coincidental that it's a, it's a lighter yellow, but it also is giving me the implication that that part of the leaf is just kind of rippling up. There's, um, I got a lot of orange over here, so I'm gonna use yellow with just a touch of orange on my brush, because it's not a deep orange, it's just kind of a, a soft, subtle orange. And you can see every layer that I create, it becomes softer and softer in appearance. So I've got this kind of coming up in through here, and then it just gets a little bit lighter and kind of blends into that yellow. There's a little bit of yellow down in through here, so yellow and white. And again, we'll have a, a, a final kind of step with um, manipulating those shadows, finishing the shadows and, and the veins. And I just want one more little layer over in through here with my yellow. And if I needed a touch more orange on my brush, I could certainly do that or a little bit of burnt sienna. So just another layer to uh, kind of smooth it out a little bit. I just picked up a tiny bit of uh, burnt sienna with my yellow just to give myself a nice even blend there. And if there was little spots where I needed to clean up around my background, now's the time to do it. So this is the time where I could just kind of sit around those edges and, and do anything that I needed to. So that blend looks pretty good on that one. And again, you'll have that final step to um, put the edges on. Hold on, I just picked up a little bit more orange and yellow because I felt like I wanted a little bit more here. And this little guy in through here, I feel like that should be part of my background. I'm actually picking up a little bit of brown and black. Don't think I said either of those colors. So brown and black went on my brush so I can get this little, uh, again, it's a little piece in the, in the photo that I feel is part of the background that I might have missed in my drawing. So I'm just kind of picking this and just popping these little dark colors in through there. And that looks pretty good to me. So I just need to get that little edge. And then I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and move on to, I wanted to go back to front. So I'm gonna do this one next, wash and dry my brush. And again, I think I just need um, to put a little bit more burnt sienna on this guy up and through here, cause this one's all in the shadow. This little leaf pops out. So I don't need to do much. I'm really just looking to smooth it out a little bit more. Give myself that, um, I'm picking up a little bit of yellow. There's a little, there's a little pop of brightness right in through here. So a little yellow and white is right up in that little corner and just blend it out. Uh, this, so that's that leaf. This little guy in through here, I'm just gonna go more burnt sienna on here. Again, this is, I'm, I will make them deeper my shadows deeper with my um, with my shadow step, but this is just allowing me a gentle transition into them without making them too, too uh, much. And then I feel like this leaf comes next. So again, more burnt sienna is going on my brush. And this kind of goes right up to this leaf right in through here. And this one's pretty, this one I've got to kind of, um, not re-identify, but, um, uh, I put the, the shadow a little bit more um, over in through here. And this kind kind of, I'm not sure what this one was. I think this is a little back leaf too, this little point right in through here. So just making that a little darker. I'm gonna put this a little darker too, that little section. So as I'm going through this, so that my first pass on these leaves was just kind of a carefree, okay, it's lighter at the top leaves and darker at the bottom leaves. Now, as I'm starting to develop this, I'm paying closer attention to the photo and I'm saying, okay, I've got, I've got a little bright spot in through here. So now I am allowing for my uh, darker tones 
to work themselves around where I want those lighter tones to be. There's a big shadow kind of coming on, casting itself on this leaf and through here. So again, I'm paying more attention to it where that where that shadow is going, um, and then I will I will uh, create the or do the second layer to the gradient on that particular on that particular leaf. And I don't know if you notice, but I wash or wipe my brush all the time. I, this is how I control the quantity of paint on my brush. Sometimes I want a lot, sometimes I want a little, but I, I, I can't always control how much I pick up um, from my palette. So sometimes I'll put a little kind of pile of paint on my canvas and then just move it around and wipe it off my brush when, when I feel I need to. This one right in through here, I need it super bright, so I'm washing and drying my brush. I want uh, yellow and white on my brush, so yellow and white, and I'm just gonna, this is the, ed the edge of this leaf in through here, and it's really bright, so I'm gonna uh, use my yellow and white to create that, and just go right to that tip. And if I make it too white, I'm okay with that too. I'd rather it whiter at this point than darker because I can always um, put that vibrant yellow back on top of it, but I want that light base in order to um, to help me out. That's why I started with such a um, light base, that vibrant yellow right on top of white to, to get me these, um, these contrasts. So this one's done, this one's done. This one is as far as I need to bring it right now. So now I'm gonna work on the next one that's underneath, which to me is this one. So I'm picking up just a little bit of burnt sienna. There's a, um, a evidence of a shadow kind of in through here, and then it comes down onto this little tip in through here. And again, it's right next to one that has a shadow, <laughs> and but we'll, we'll make them uh, their own independent shadows on the on that final final shadow kind of step. This little tip is is brighter, and I just kind of put a little shadow on it. So I just picked up a little bit of yellow um, and white just to counteract that. There's a little tiny shadow kind of coming down in through here as well, and then the rest of this leaf is just kind of a mishmash of light tones. Oh, I got a little darkness right here, so I'm gonna put. A little darkness here and again it doesn't you do not need to put yours exactly as mine I just find that when I'm teaching it's easier to um, teach you what I'm seeing because the, I can't make up photo realistic type of details in my head my head just doesn't let me do that so when I'm when I'm teaching the easiest thing I can do is teach you what I'm seeing in that photo this um, and so that's the placement of all these shadows and stuff so this particular leaf in through here also has a big shadow up here that I'm seeing so I'm gonna put a big kind of dark area I see a stick too that we get to paint in a little while but again just the burnt sienna and I'm allowing for myself to still see I can see that pencil mark in between my um, my leaves, so I can still see my guideline. If you are having difficulty with yours, you can either um, you know redraw it or use a different um, method. This leaf right in through here, there's still there's another shadow over here. So I'm still just working on one leaf right now, um, and then there's a little shadow back in through here, like that, and right around this guy right in through here. So now I'm gonna just put my second layer on this one and it is gonna be, I don't really need to do much like this that looks nice to me, but I just washed and dried my brush. I'm gonna put a little bit more yellow and white just to make sure that this is uber bright in through here and clean up any little edges that I feel might need to be cleaned up. That looks pretty good. And this is all one leaf, but there's that shadow on it. So I'm just gonna kind of get that to go pretty bright in through there. And then that looks pretty good, but I still need a little bit more. Uh, I think I'm going yellow with a tiny touch of orange just to, again, smooth out my gradient on here. Yellow with a teeny tiny touch of orange because that's what I'm seeing. <laughs> and I also need to give myself a little, a little bit better of an edge over here. So 
again, yellow with a teeny tiny bit of orange. Give myself my second coat on here. And by the time I'm done, uh, my, my pencil marks will be gone. But right now, I, I'm okay with them being here. They help guide me. Um, then I just have these two leafs in through here. That one's done. Oh, and, and these guys, right? Let me do this one first, and then we'll get those ones up there. Um, so this one in through here, yellow and white. Uh, I need to wash my brush. I just had orange on it. Uh, yellow and white. I have a bright area up in through here that is kind of next to a shadow. So I see it's pretty bright right here. So I just wanted to make sure that I had that. Um, there is a shadow, so wiping my brush off, picking up my burnt sienna, get my shadow going in through here and under here. And this whole, and again, this is where I'm going to be able to um, start to really see the difference between the leaves is by these shadows. The shadows are going to help to make each leaf kind of pop out and be its own leaf. So that looks pretty good. Um, I've got that shadow. That shadow actually comes right onto here a little bit, right on top of that bright area. <laughs> and then uh, I've got my nice yellow and white here. Okay, so I just need to do a nice second coat on here. So uh, picking up, I'm gonna start with just red because I really feel like this is nice and red down in through here. And again, just my second, my second coat, smoothing out my gradient if I feel that I want any lighter areas, like over on this left-hand side, right in through here, I feel it's a little lighter. So I can pick up a teeny tiny bit of white paint with my red and give myself a little bit of a light edge over in through here. I also feel that there's uh, this lighter red is up top, so I will, I'll get to that. I'll put a little bit of lightness up in through there as well. And I, what I'm trying to do is see past those veins and stuff right now. The veins um, in leaves for me can kind of confuse me through the process. If I if I start to look at those too early, I can I can easily get confused. If I you know if I'm just going for a carefree painting and I don't need it to be or I'm not trying to make it look like the photo, I can certainly you know do that kind of stuff early on. But for me, I'm trying to make this look pretty representational of this specific photo. And if I started working with those um, those veins too early, I might just get lost. So I'm, I'm trying to see past those right now and just look for the gradients, the main gradients that I'm seeing in the leaf. So I'm picking up red plus a little bit of white right now because I'm seeing a, almost like a little pinkish kind of tone up and through here. So this is red and white. And this is gonna, again, just kind of speak to the, the unique gradient that I'm seeing on this specific leaf. It might even be telling the viewer that it's popping out a little bit, um, that specific spot. It might be saying something else. <laughs> I'm picking up red, yellow, and a touch of white right now. So, cause I see another little fun area in through here. Maybe not quite that light but maybe a little bit uh white and orange will also work <laughs> as this little highlight or lighter tone to the um leaf so this was uh white and orange which will t make a little bit of a light peachy color and again it doesn't have to be uh, you don't ever have to take it as far as i'm taking it i'm just showing you uh, how to take it pretty far because that's what this I'm, I'm trying to emulate a, a photograph and to give you those, those details in it. That looks pretty good. I'm going to pick up a little bit more uh, red and yellow just to get this left edge uh, to have its second coat like that. Red and yellow. I have a little pop in through there. And yellow again is very transparent so it'll just help to smooth it out. Um, on top of that red give you a nice soft look to it this looks pretty good and then i have this edge over here so again i'm gonna just um pick up a little bit of yellow on my dirty brush right now get this over here i think i want actually a little bit more red now that i'm seeing how dark it is in the 
photo over in this section and through here. But again, this is part of the this one main leaf. So they've got to kind of connect in color wise um, when you're transitioning underneath another um, another leaf. So just be mindful of that. Picking up a tiny bit of white just to, there's a little tip on this leaf in through here. That looks pretty good. A little bit of yellow is going on my brush. And again, I'm flipping back and forth between these colors just because I'm doing one specific leaf. It, you could do all your darks and then all your lights. Um, so I have this leaf is actually on top of this one. So I'm going to do this one. Washing and dry my brush. Just picking up some, uh, I'm going to go yellow with just a little bit of orange. This one doesn't need a whole heck of a lot. So yellow with a little bit of orange. I'm seeing it pretty orange down this little spot here. So just, there's no shadows on this one except for up in this little corner because this is the top dog. <laughs> this is the top, the top uh, leaf except for this little one little corner in through here. Um, so it, there shouldn't be too many shadows on the one that's on top. Um, but if you're finding you have a lot of shadows on the one that's on top, that's probably just because there's another, um, maybe there's a tree or something on top of it that is creating that appearance. I'm putting a little bit more white on this tip here just to make sure that I'm going to have um, success in hiding those little um, pencil marks. This guy in through here, that's going to have a little bit of orange. There's little shadows behind there, but we'll take care of those in a future step. I just went yellow and white over in this corner like this. And then I'm just going to kind of blend this out. And then uh, yellow and white is going to hit this corner up in through here. Again, just going really super bright right now with the yellow and the white for a couple of reasons. One, to help with those um, pencil marks, because I did choose to use a pencil today, which is not the easiest to cover when you're doing um, light colors like this, but it's good for demonstration purposes so you guys can could see it on top of that um, light background. So that looks pretty good. And then just some more yellow and white over in through here. Give myself this nice bright edge over here. And again, I'm kind of just going pretty fast with this second um, layer, but again, I, I want the second layer. Um, I'm picking up some burnt sienna actually to, there's another shadow right on top here that I want to attend to. And then I'm going to, uh, I have this one right here, wash and dry my brush, and then that top one is not going to take much. So right here, I'm going to just pick up a uh, red for down here. A little bit of red, giving myself that nice second coat. And then I will bring it right to my edges. And then as I come up, it feels like it's a little bit darker right in through here. And then I'm going to pick up red plus a touch of white just to give myself a little bit of extra brightness on maybe this little corner here and maybe a little bit in through here. And then just kind of rub it in. So again, that red and white is just going to give me a little bit of an additional lightness. You know, if it goes too pink on you, you can always bring back some of the red and or you can use a little bit of yellow in your combination of colors. Um, but this will just give you another kind of tone to work with. Red and yellow just went on my brush to get this little corner in through here. And then this top one up here, I, want, I need to lighten up this area right here. So I'm really washing and drying my brush. I probably need a new paper towel at some point too. <laughs> Washing and drying my brush. Um, I'm going to hit this with uh, yellow and white. This area right in through here. So right along this edge is going to get yellow and white. And I can go really pretty light right now like that. And this is going to come, oh, it's actually right to the tip, right in through here. I just brought my, that initial darkness, I just brought it down too far when I um, initially did it, which is fine. This is how you would uh, rectify something like that, is just kind of bring, bring back the lightness. <laughs> and then this will work out for me like this. And this kind of comes up here. And then this kind of comes down in through here. 
And then I am going to, while this is kind of dry, I'm just gonna bring this whole thing up here. I'll put um, the shadow back on top of it. So that looks good. While that's drying, I'm just gonna do another layer of my burnt sienna up here. So this is just another layer of burnt sienna for that shadow purpose. And then there is another shadow on here, but we'll do that in the future step. And then once I've got this done, I am going to be using my, um, I think I'm gonna use my small round and maybe this brush for the next step. So you can just wash this brush, make an or and or make any fiddling adjustments, <laughs> then wash this brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some stems and some veins. I'm gonna use my number three round brush. The colors I'm gonna use are black, brown, um, white, yellow, red, and if I use any other colors, I'll let you know, but I'm thinking I, I might not need to use any other colors. So what I'm gonna first do is, um, I actually wanna put a second layer in this, which has nothing to do with stems or veins, but I, I, I need this developed before we move on. So I'm just gonna uh, put a little bit of yellow paint on my brush and put another layer on this. <laughs> so this, that, that base coat that we did last step needs its, needs its second coat right now. So, so you saw what I was doing. I wanted to make sure that I did that on camera. There we go, now it's, back, now it's where I need it to be. So um, I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna put my stems in place. There isn't very many stems. There's the little, there's a little stick stem thing over on this side. So we're gonna put that in place with some brown and black paint. So I have brown and black paint on my brush. Um, this leaf right in through here looks like there's um, a stem kind of coming right on top of this thing in through here and bring out over in through here. So. Again, you don't have to make these exactly as I'm making them, but in, in the photo, they kind of are bumpy. So you could just kind of bump it along the way and that'll give it a little bit more of a representational um, aspect. There's another one that comes right from here and then it kind of crosses into here. There's a little peekaboo spot of this yellow right there and it just kind of comes I would say right in, into here, maybe even behind that or something. And um, so it comes down, this connects to here like this. And it's pretty thick, this little guy here. I don't even know if you can see the corner of this leaf. I'm not sure how that, I, I can't, sometimes you can't see all the details or understand what you're seeing. So a lot of times what I find myself doing is just going for, um, color patterns. So if I see a light color, I'm going to put a light color. If I see a dark color, I'm going to put a dark color. Even if I'm not quite sure what it is, um, I'm just going to roll with it because that's what the, that's what the um, photo is telling me to do. So there's a whole bunch of darkness on this particular little branch of sorts. So I'm going to just put it in there, little bumps and stuff. Um, picking up a little bit more brown. There's little offshoots, which I assume are the stems to the leaves. So there's one here that just kind of um, curves like this. Then there's one that kind of comes off of here and just kind of disappears behind this guy. And then there's one that kind of comes right in through here and di disappears back there. And then there's one that comes and it lands somewhere in through here and it starts about here. So something like this and it goes behind that leaf. So I'm just gonna erase it with my finger real quick before, before it firms up there. Um, so that looks pretty good. While these guys are setting, because I'm gonna add some additional detail to them, but while they're setting, I'm gonna go work on my, um, my veins. I don't really see too many more evident stems, so I'm just gonna go with those as my main stems. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. So in this particular photo reference, the stems on these leaves are lighter than the color of the leaf. So, or 
of the lightest color. So like on this one, the veins seem to be a light yellow color. So I'm gonna actually take my chrome yellow because it's so transparent. And I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it to create a light yellow color. So this way I won't struggle too hard with it showing up on here because if I just did yellow on top of that, you would hardly see it. So I'm gonna start with light yellow and I'm seeing that there is a vein that's coming from somewhere in this uh, area and it's going all the way to the to the tip of here. So you're not gonna be able to see it all the way down um, because it's gonna pass through some tones that are exactly the same color, but once you've kind of got the idea and you've got that main kind of um, branch of the vein, <laughs> you can take it and say, okay, well, I see another one that kind of comes here and it disappears behind here somewhere. And it's got a little bit of a curve to it. So, and you can, you know, you can skip over your um, shadows and stuff like that. I'm going to go right through the shadows. So that way, um, as I, as I develop the shadows, it'll, it'll work out just fine. I don't want these to be too thick or too solid, so I'm, that was a little bit too thick, so I just kind of brushed out the sides a little bit. And then I'm, and it seems to be pretty light, and if it's too light for you, you can either add a little bit more yellow or you can come back and add a little bit of darkness to it, but um, I'm thinking I'm gonna roll with it right now. I'm gonna start right here, and this one kind of disappears right in through here. So we're just gonna take this and do that. And that's kind of the, the three main ones that I see in there. And then I just see some, some little offshoots kind of taken, and you can just take it and kind of bring off these little, these little shoots. The, the little side veins kind of seem a little bit thicker, um, just like branches on a tree that are thicker by the trunk and then they get a little bit um, thinner the farther away that they get. So as you're doing yours, just know that, you know, if you, can, if you make them a little bit thicker right where they're meeting that center and then just kind of fade them out, they'll make, they'll, that'll make them look a little bit more natural. Um, so I've got a couple over in through here. Well, that was a little bit aggressive. <laughs> And then um, I'm not seeing too too many more. And if you're if you're another little trick is once you once you get them on there, if you need to enhance them or feel that you want them to stick out a little bit more. So if I put one up in through here, and then maybe a little one coming off of here. Let's say I wanted these to stick out a little bit more. I could actually pick up a little bit of my yellow and orange, just a teeny tiny bit and make these little darker areas right where that, um, where that vein is kind of coming off of the main section of the, um, of the stem or whatever, that'll make those pop out just a little bit more without having to recolorize the, the whole thing. So that's definitely a way to go about it. You can, again, add if you want it brighter, you could add more white to it. Uh, just showing you different different techniques to get different color variations. You could start with a little bit of white if you wanted, let it dry for a minute, and then you can come back on top of it with a little bit of chrome yellow, and that'll make it look more yellow or you know more dominant in that in that color family. So there's a couple of different approaches that you can do. Um, I think the, the biggest thing is to just not make it look super duper um, consistent. Just have fun with it. Um, allow for those, for those veins to be pretty natural looking. Uh, loosen your hand up a little bit so you're not holding it super tight like a pencil. That you know The looseness in your grip will allow you to just kind of be a little bit more carefree with it. Um, try not to press as hard as I just did. <laughs> Pressing hard is going to make them very visible um, and wide. So I'm going to start on this one with my light yellow. I think I need to add a little bit more yellow to it though so it's not so light as that one. So light yellow but not quite as light as that one. And then I see this is kind of coming off from here and it trails down into here. And there's also like, it almost turns into pink veins over here. So red and white will make you a little bit of pink. I can take that and this kind of comes down in through here. And then I also have one kind of coming out. Oh, that was a little bit wide. 
actually I think I, that one's a little bit more yellow so I picked up the light yellow and bring this down in through here and then you just start sp spawning off of it so just kind of bringing these little and I'm again I'm watching the photo so I'm letting and then letting that kind of steer me into where some of these veins are but you don't have to make it exactly as that photo just feel you know you can just feel your own rhythm as you're making these kind of details it doesn't have to be exactly um, as as the photo dictates just sometimes just learning how to get that process down is the funnest part I'm adding a little bit more white to this um, is the funnest part because you can at that point once you've got the the process and the know-how in order to create these um, these illusions you can certainly make it into something that is your own you can see I'm almost just kind of smudging this with my with my finger a little bit just to get it to um, become less um, invasive and just a little bit more subtle you can also when it comes to um, like this area I'm seeing over on this right hand side I wash my brush there's some darkness right by the stem over on this side so I just took a little bit of brown and I'm kind of just dotting in on the side of this vein and again I wouldn't have thought of this I just see it in the photo so it's going to um, allow it to have that organic kind of look to it without me doing anything other than following that color pattern on that photo. I see that there's maybe a little bit more red towards the center of the um, of this vein area on this one. So I had this little pink stuff but now I'm seeing a little bit more red going towards that that veiny part. So a, a leaf to me does not just have one flat color it's got so many multiple tones to it and even like little speckle marks so just feel feel the freedom of being able to create those um, additional um, aspects to it there's these veins over in through here just getting little short ones little longer ones just pulling this out in through here wiping away <laughs> as soon as I put it on uh, that looks pretty good in through there and then um, I feel this kind of maybe wants to mer I want to merge this a little bit more so I just put a little bit of red on my brush just to make sure this looks like it's the same leaf in through there that looks good maybe a little bit more red up in through here just give me a little bit of additional kind of uh, information in that one there we go that makes me happy <laughs> sometimes you don't need to do much to to make yourself um, you know enjoy what you're seeing and again I'm seeing a little bit more red right by this vein so I, I just want to do it so uh, if you have seen it and you want to do it feel free to to go ahead so that looks good um, and then of course we do have another step we'll be doing on um, the, with the shadows but this is getting all that vein information in so that looks good and I'm gonna um, go ahead and do this one up here with my light yellow so light yellow I see um, and just trying to give start in one place with a little roadmap so this one's kind of coming out from this center area up top oh there's even a little one over to the side there it comes down in through there and just really subtle really subtle is what I'm seeing I'm not seeing it um, overpowering which is why I didn't want to do um, it too too much or you know I didn't definitely didn't want to use dark colors because I'm not seeing them as dark colors I'm seeing them as light colors I and I've made that um, assumption and I've done it on my paintings a ton of times where I I feel like the veins should be darker um, and they are in a lot of instances but um, just when you are trying to go uh, uh, and emulate a photo reference just don't go with what you think is right go with what you're seeing in in that reference because you know what you're what you typically think is one way maybe you're looking at a different species of of uh, of a leaf and it's got something totally different I'm picking up a little bit of orange with my with my light yellow just to 
deepen up this uh, area up here so we can see this vein just a little bit more. Um, so moral to that story, just watch the photo and that, that's going to help you um, get the, the more realistic vibe to it and experience or the visual um, the visual information. So I'm just, again, just kind of amping this, these veins up with a little bit more of the orange um, because that's kind of where I started on this particular um, leaf and just kind of putting in these little tiny marks. I think I need to put a little bit more light yellow over here on this on this edge too, just to kind of make sure that I'm, I've got that edge almost disappeared. And then over here, this is just all my light yellow. I don't really need to do anything over there. My stems are pretty, I don't, these are all no anything. Oh, more yellow on this guy here. I just picked up uh, chrome yellow. I need to finish my stems up there, but I just wanted to tackle this. I'm looking around for other veins that I might see in any of these. Oh, I see one right in through here. So a little light yellow is going on this guy right in through here. And then I'm picking up a tiny bit of orange with my dirty brush because there's just a little, a little evidence of it in through there. That doesn't have any. This one's got something. So a little light yellow is coming in here. And I'm just going to pull that out in through there. That looks good. This has like light yellow on the edge, which I think I missed. There we go. That's good. And then on these little stems, I'm going to just pick up a little bit of, um, I didn't say I was using burnt sienna, but I'm picking up burnt sienna and white to give myself a little highlight on this stem right here. And then same thing, just burnt sienna and white. I just need to give myself a little texture on that. And then on these guys in through here, um, I'm going orange and white on these guys, these little stems right here. So just a little um, highlight with orange and white on these guys right here. And then you can make any little fiddling adjustments that you feel are necessary. I'm going to use uh, probably the same brush for the next step so you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish the leaves, <laughs> so all the shadows, but there are two or one area that I missed on my last step, which is the veins on this one right here. So I'm going to do that first and then we'll finish up our shadows. I think I'm going to be using two brushes on this step, my number 10 and my number three round. The colors I'm going to use are brown, burnt sienna, uh, light yellow, and that might be it. If I use any other colors, I might have to use some white because I'm probably going to be doing little touch-ups on some of my leaves as well. So we're doing predominantly the shadows, but I also need to make sure my edges of my leaves are, are taken care of. So I'm going to hit this uh, leaf here first. I'm going in for some of that light red or the red and white that I had used on this one. And I've got a stem here. I've got a stem here. And I think that's it. And then they just kind of come out like this. There's not much to it. That's probably why I missed it. <laughs> and then, oh, there's a little light spot right here. I like that light spot. Something like that. So what I do notice on this one, though, is um, right next to the veins is some darkness. So I just picked up some red. So I'm going to go right next to that vein and put a little bit of red. Again, that, it, um, it just kind of allows for that vein to almost pop out as if it is three-dimensional, which I, I think in some cases they, they kind of are. <laughs> but um, it just really gives a little bit more of an illusion when you can give those, those minimal gradients alongside. Um, I feel like I could kind of uh, bring this out just a little bit more in through here as well. And then if I felt I wanted any darker spots on this leaf, um, I feel like the bottom should be a little darker. I'm actually going to pick up a touch of brown to put a little bit darker brown and red, a little bit darker tone down um, in through here just to because I feel that I, I'm seeing these darker tones down at the bottom. And I'm just kind of speckling it, giving 
the appearance that I feel I'm seeing in the photo like that. Uh, maybe a little bit of the remnants on my brush in through here. It's kind of darkening that area a little bit, a little bit in through here. And these little nuances that I'm seeing and I'm uh, emulating will give that the, that dimensional element to, to the leaves. So that looks pretty good. Um, just a little, I'm going light yellow right now on the tip of this too. It's a little light yellow right in through there. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tackle my shadows, which are also going to just kind of finesse and clean up all of my little edges. So you could really start anywhere that you want because we've got everything in place. We know where all of our edges are, where this is our kind of our cleanup stage to it. Um, so we're gonna be going into little crevices. So it doesn't really matter if you start from the back and work your way forward. That would be the optimal way to do it, but if you, I, I know there's so many leaves here, I'm gonna start in the back and work my way towards the front, but I might run into areas where I, where I just, I'm like, I'm just gonna do this one first. <laughs> so I'm gonna go for my deep, darker areas. So for me, I'm gonna be using brown and this one right in through here is pretty dark. So I'm just gonna pick up, I'm using my small uh, round brush. I'm gonna pick up some brown and I'm just doing another layer on top of this with the brown. My brown is transparent, so it is going to take on some of that original tone underneath, which is gonna provide me with a multi-toned type of appearance or shadow in through here. If you wanted yours to be a solid color, then you'd probably want to pick a color to go with, maybe add a little opacity or a little bit of um, white in it or use a paint that's not so transparent and just do a solid color. But again, when I'm doing natural elements, I always see multiple tones. So that's what that's why I like to layer like this. Um, I do see this one in through here is pretty dark as well. So I'm gonna just use my brown on top of that burnt sienna base. Well, it was yellow, then it was burnt sienna. Now it's got this brown on top of it. So again, it is a multi-toned type of um, application that I'm doing. And this is, this leaf back here is where I'm gonna start to just kind of clean up along those edges of the, of the leaf that's next to it. So this step is going to provide um, a multiple um, kind of benefits. Not only am I finishing my shadows or getting the, that portion of those leaves to be fully executed, but I'm also looking around and making sure that the edges on the leaves around it or near it are also fully executed. So this looks like it gets a little bit lighter up and through here. So I'm just gonna pick up on my dirty brush a little bit of light yellow and just get this to transition just a little bit lighter as I'm coming up here. So a little bit light yellow. Again, not much, just something that's gonna finish my edge as well as um, get that little section to look a little bit lighter like I'm seeing it in the photo. So that looks pretty good. And I'm just smooth this out just a little bit more. I'm digging that. So now I'm gonna move on to my next area that's in the back. So I'm thinking it's this leaf right here. I do feel that I should switch brushes to my medium brush for this large area. I don't want to just go brown because that's gonna make it as dark as this. So I'm actually gonna pick up Burnt Sienna Brown and my light yellow. So Burnt Sienna Brown and my light yellow are all on my brush at the same time. You could create a custom color if you wanted to, but I'm just finding that these tones that I'm seeing in the painting are really different from, or in the photo, are really different from one leaf to the next. Um, so by me using these colors at the same time on my brush, I can create these different tones from one leaf to the next. So they all have their kind of own identity. Um, I might need to use my smaller brush as well, but right now just gonna see if I can uh, get the rest of this little leaf. That was a little too dark, putting a touch of water on my brush. Um, and again, just bringing it up to the edge of my shadow as well. And I might have to switch back to my other brush in a second here, if I can't 
finish this. Yeah, this is getting a little bit too. Um, I'm going to do this big area up here, then I'll switch to my smaller brush. So I'm going to do the same thing with this guy up here. So brown, burnt sienna, and my light yellow. I'm going to put this additional layer up in through here. And just a nice smooth layer, maybe a little bit more burnt sienna. And again, just I can hardly in the photo see the difference between um, this one and this one. So I'm just allowing for that to happen. There's a shadow that comes across in front of this guy right here. So I'm just kind of bringing that. It's a little wiggly thing there. And then just going to finish this up here. Brown, burnt sienna, and a little bit of light yellow. This is also, a, this was the other shadow um, coming down here that I'll do in a second. I'll just pull this down over here so I can get my nice smooth look to it that I was desiring. And then I have that little piece of the shadow that kind of comes down right in through here. So again, I'm just working on predominantly shadows and finishing the edges of my, um, of my leaves. So as I go through this, like right now I'm, I'm using this big brush, but I don't, it's not going to work for me much longer. So I'm going to put it away and I'm going to take back out my number um, three round and then just kind of work my way into the darker areas. So I still, this one is right here is pretty dark. So I'm going burnt sienna and brown. It's almost as dark as these guys, but maybe not as dark. And again, I'm, I'm using it to clean up these edges to provide myself with um, the opportunity to get rid of any pencil marks. So you can certainly use a little bit of water on your brush as well, that's or liquid on your brush with these colors that you're using because that's going to allow you to get into those little areas, making sure that you have where you want. Feel this shadow over here should kind of come out a little bit more so I'm gonna just this is where I'm manipulating them also to be as um, as much like the photo as I want to get them to be like the photo um, but again if you feel that you want yours to be even more um, to the T than I'm doing you can certainly fiddle more than I am fiddling. I'm just going to get mine to go in, in a close enough way that's going to please my eye. I'm going to bring this one down in through here. And again, using my brown plus my burnt sienna, cleaning up these edges, allowing for my shadows to really look pretty clean. They're, um, they, uh, they do look pretty clean on the photo. However, they warp with um, the, uh, the movement of that particular leaf. So as I'm going through this, if I don't get it exactly as it looks in, in the photo, it's okay because maybe my leaf on my painting is, is bent a little bit differently than it is in the, in the photo. So I'm okay with that. And again, I'm going to be flipping back and forth between burnt sienna, brown, and my light yellow in order to get these um, to, to develop. This one is part of this shadow up here, so I just want to make sure that I've got it um, in the way that I want and it kind of blends in with that color above so something like this and then again just going right underneath here going right up to that pencil this goes right to the edge of here and the little tip of that and I'm not terribly concerned about getting these tones exact as they are in the photo but what I am working on doing is getting them to Re be representational of what I'm seeing in the photo. I got a little peekaboo yellow spot in through here that I didn't emulate, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it right now. Hold on one second. Um, what I'm what I want to do is have it pretty representational. But if I don't get every single tone exactly as it is in the photo, I'm so okay with that because I. I, I don't need it to be. I just am looking for it to be um, similar enough uh, to give that impression that it is a representation of that photo. Um, I'm looking to give the, as much detail as makes my painterly eye happy. And then 
wherever that may lie is where it, where it lies. If you want yours to be more or less, that's, that's your call. Um, so this is looking pretty good. I've got this little one in through here and it, as the shadow comes out into the um, light, maybe it's a little bit brighter or more diffused. So you can certainly um, get it to go in whatever way you want. That looks good. This one needs to be a little bit more. And again, if you felt that you wanted to um, pre-mix a, 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 a solid color, you could certainly do that. This one's getting a little extra shadow because my pencil mark was showing. So I'm just bringing my shadow to my pencil mark. And again, as you're coming over these areas, if you want them to be um, more lighter or more orange or more anything, that's where, again, you make the decision whether or not you want to pre-mix a one color to use or you can use when when I do shadows a lot of time I'm often using a, a transparent color so it shows the the colors from underneath in this particular painting I chose to do it a different way I almost sectioned out my um, my shadows because I knew that they were so dramatic and they were going to have such an impact where they they are pretty darn um, Diff not necessarily different colors, but um, it was going to be easy to section them out because they had kind of clean edges to them. So if you if you wanted to, you could have used just a trans, you know, done all of the leaves. I need to finish this edge here. I'm washing and drying my brush. You could have done all of the leaves in their lighter color and then come back and put um, the shadow with a transparent color right on top of that um, that original or the full colored leaf. But this is just a different approach. And as you, again, learn your, your own painting ways, you might find that this is a kind of approach that you like much better than the other. And if so, then that's the way that you go. Um, I'm gonna use a little bit more burnt sienna on this particular shadow. I feel as if it's kind of coming out a little bit more in the orangey. Um, tones down towards this bottom area and through here. So I'm using a little bit, I'm actually not even picking up brown anymore. I'm just picking up my burnt sienna right now as these shadow colors. And you can see I'm definitely concentrating on kind of um, bringing them right to the edge of the leaf that's in front of it. And that gives me that, um, that nice clean edge. I've got a little shadow kind of coming down here and over here so I, you can create additional shadows as you go through the process. Um, I'm feeling like I wanna use red and brown for my shadow here because I feel as if I really wanna get those red tones in this shadow. So I'm using red and brown for my shadow on these red leaves. And that's gonna, again, kinda of take on the color of the leaf so it's going to um, be as if this, the red leaf is being shadowed. So that kind of speaks to what I was talking about, the transparency. If you choose to use a transparent color for your shadow making, it will take on whatever the color is underneath it. So you could use one shadow making color on top of all of your different colors and it'll take on whatever is underneath. You can use it as like a glaze, if you will, um, for that particular um, for that particular area. I want to um, actually bring in a little bit of my light yellow because I feel like I want to have the illusion of my stems in here too. So I just, while that was wet, just kind of put a little bit of that in there, wiping my brush off, picking up a little bit more brown and red um, to put this shadow right in through here, maybe a little bit more brown because that wasn't dark enough. And Again, this is my shadow of uh, on my red leaf. So I didn't um, put a shadow here where I should have. So I'm gonna do that right now. Little brown and red. And again, your, your shadow making process can be totally different from mine. Oh, this is a shadow of this front leaf. So I'm gonna bring this and it goes behind that one. What a cool shadow that is. Um, so just 
little bit of brown. This is the, the shadow of this top leaf here, which is super cool. And just bring this little peekaboo spot down like that. I need to put, I'm pick, picking up a little bit of my uh, pink color right here just to make sure I got the tip of that on there. That looks pretty darn neat. Um, and then, let's see. I just have these little shadows up here. I think I, oh, I need this one here. So this is going back to my um, burnt sienna, light yellow and brown, this little guy right here. And again, primarily to, well, two, two purposes this is serving. It's cleaning up my edges of my other leaves and it's finishing my shadows. So whatever you need to do as you're coming into meeting the edges of the other leaves if you need to touch them up feel free to touch them up mm, i did that one that one this oh i have these little shadows right on the edges here so uh burnt sienna is and red is what i'm picking up right now there's a little shadow right here and if you have a little edge of a leaf that is not evident you can always either add a little shadow or a little contrast next to it and that's gonna get it to stand out. So this little edge right here is now immediately standing out because we're putting a tiny little shadow next to it. I've got this little shadow right here in through here. There's, we already got this shadow there. That's, ooh, this could pop out just a little bit more. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. And then I have these little guys up in through here. So just brown little burnt sienna and my light yellow so i'm kind of making a muted type of a of a tone in through here maybe just a little more burnt sienna and you can adjust it as you're as you're coloring it so if it's too too yellow or too brown just add a little bit of the hue of the other one uh, i think i'm going to pick up burnt sienna and brown get this little guy in through here because this one's pretty darn dark and again these are the moments as you're coming into the final stages here, these are the moments that you get to make those little fiddling adjustments if you feel they're necessary. And like there feels like there's a little shadow right in through here. And it all just starts to come to life when you're um, doing these last steps. So uh, burnt sienna, brown, and my light yellow. Just get this little last little guy in through here. And I'm sure once I get this done, I'm gonna go back and just cross, you know, look it over one more time and see if there's any little adjustments that I wanna make. Like this edge in through here, I feel as though I could put a little bit of watered down burnt sienna and kind of turn that, that leaf right behind it just a little bit darker. There's a little shadow here, burnt sienna and brown that I can put coming out here. So I just gotta look around and say, okay, where are my edges that, can I see them all? Picking up a little bit of orange on my dirty brush. Can I see all of my edges or do I need to um, adjust them at all? So there's, you know, little, uh, another little shadow underneath here. All these little shadows around the edges of the leaves are going to make them more visible. So as I'm going through this, if I'm missing the edge of something, it's probably just because I, I, I missed my shadow. So I see that there's another little shadow in through here. So I just need to pop in that little shape that I'm seeing in the, um, in the photo. And once I've got that little shape in there, now the edge of that leaf becomes visible. And if it's still not as visible as I want, I can amp up that contrast. And I'm thinking that that's pretty good. I feel like there might be just a stem that I could attach right here, just a little brown on my brush just to kind of um, accentuate that. And then, um, like I said, I'll probably go through with my own dry eye and see if there's anything like this edge might need a little, um, a little extra layer of paint to get rid of my pencil. And then we're gonna be using this small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this little brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the lower left or the lower right. I think I'm gonna go lower 
left on this one with my olive green or my army green, that custom green that we created, I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could of course sign yours with your first name, you could make up a special symbol, you could mark it with the date, you could sign it on the back, whatever you want is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very vibrant autumn image and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.